So, new economic numbers came out on Wednesday that show, unfortunately, that our economy is most likely heading into a double-dip recession. And that's bad. Uh, The GDP shows that our economy, in fact, shrunk the last quarter of 2012. It is the worst showing uh, of our economy since 2009 uh, for over three and a half years. And the reason, uh, the reason, the primary reason that it shrunk um, is, in fact, uh, the public sector uh, and public sector spending. The truth is public sector uh, spending shrank fairly drastically. And the reason public sector spending shrank was that lovely word we talk about so often here. That is, of course, austerity. Austerity, folks. Cuts, cuts, cuts. Cuts in government spending. Cuts in government spending. That is what led to the economy shrinking. Reading from the Washington Post, cuts in, quote, government consumption expenditures and gross investment knocked 1.33 percentage points off the total change in economic growth. If government spending had just been neutral, that is to say, if it had been neither contracted nor expanded, Expanded, the economy would have grown by 1.23 percentage points rather than shrunk by 0.01 percent by 0.1 percentage points. But isn't the, this isn't the first time that total government spending and investment has been a drag on growth? It pulled growth down by 0.67 percentage points in 2010, 0.34 in 2011, and 0.33 in 2012. End quote. That's from the Washington Post. What we have here, what we have here is self-inflicted wounds. These are self-inflicted wounds. And it looks like, it looks like uh, if you look out in, in the upcoming months, it is going to get worse in, in, in the short term. Uh, because you will remember that coming up in March, coming up in March, we have even more austerity coming. We have even more spending cuts coming down the pike in the form of sequestration. What does that mean? Okay, well, reading from Think Progress, reading from Think Progress, quote, the sequester will knock 0.7% off the GDP growth this year, which will be 2013. The Bipartisan, Bipartisan Policy Center estimates that the sequester will kill... One million jobs. You heard me. One million jobs. But I guess that's not a big deal, right? That's not a big deal, really. What's the big deal? We don't need, we don't need those one million jobs in this country, do we? No, no, no. Of course we don't. Of course we don't. Those million people will be fine. Those million people will be just great. They'll probably find some other job, maybe. Who knows? They, they, they don't, we don't, the economy doesn't need, the economy doesn't need the money that those million those million people will spend they don't need them buying groceries they don't need them buying cars they don't need them buying anything they don't need them we don't need them we don't need them but at least at least though folks you can rest easily knowing that that the the austerity hawks in our country both republican and democrat alike they have a plan they have a plan the, and that plan is that plan is after driving our country into a double dip recession because of austerity we will then make it worse by doing even more austerity. What a brilliant plan, right? It's a smart plan. It's a genius plan. It's a common sense solution plan that every DC establishment village idiot can get behind. On top of that, on top of our self-inflicted wounds, a new report from the CFED found that, quote, almost half, 43.9% of U.S. households are living on the edge of financial collapse with almost no savings to fall back on in the event of a job loss, health crisis, or other income-depleting emergency, end quote. 
So, so considering, considering we're, we're, we're going to let the economy co- go back into a recession, considering we're forcing ourselves into a double dip recession and the economy is collapsing and close to half of the Americans are on the edge to, on the edge of financial collapse on the, with that, with that being said, with that being the situation that we are in, we should make even more cuts and put even more Americans on the edge or hell, push them over the edge, right? Push them over the edge. Those million people, those million people whose jobs are going to be eliminated. Let's just push them over the edge. Let's shove them over the edge. Am I right? And, and on top of that, on top of that, what we should do, right, right establishment, is we should make cuts to the social safety net that when we push and shove these people over the edge, there will be nothing there to catch them. And here's the deal. Democrats and President Barack Obama did this to themselves. Under Barack Obama, non-defense discretionary spending is at its lowest levels since the bloody 1960s. That spending and the jobs that that spending would create is actually the difference between a functioning economy and our bad economy. Remember, remember, Democrats and Barack Obama signed on to this idiotic, stupid sequestration that is going to be happening in March. They signed on to it. Barack Obama's signature is on the bloody bill. They did it to themselves by buying into and embracing full with full force austerity madness. And Frankly, I'm not sure at that at, at this point, right now, staring at, at, at the economy collapsing, I'm not sure at this point they even get it. I, I'm frankly, I'm not sure they understand. Because because they're still pushing for cuts. Even worse, I'm not sure if they did understand, even if they somehow could get around Republicans, which they can't, I'm not sure even if they could, that they would do anything about it. I see nothing, nothing to sway me from the fact that President Obama still wants to make massive cuts. And because of those cuts, the economy and the rest of us will pay dearly. We'll be right back. 